All right, hello everyone and welcome back to another video. So for today's video, we've got some really cool stuff to look at as always, a uh, bit of a celebration. Uh, we finally hit 500 subscribers. Uh, I'm a little late. I think we're actually at uh, like 510 now. Um, so thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you to everyone who has subscribed. I appreciate it to, to no end. Um, absolutely awesome to see that 500 subscriber mark. So in today's video, we're going to check out uh, kind of another uh, random assortment of stuff. We've got some Hot Wheels, Green Light, Johnny Lightning, Auto World. Um, and then down here over on the floor, I have a couple bags full of stuff that was uh, rescued from my parents' house. So we'll get in, into that stuff a little later. And um, real quick, I just wanted to show you, this is pretty cool. Uh, so my birthday's coming up. We just celebrated my birthday at my parents' house this weekend. And one of my gifts here is this little Swiss Army knife with old Greg's die cast. Uh, not engraved, but printed on there. And uh, so I thought that was really cool. So I think I'm going to use this to uh, open up my cars from now on. But yeah, now I have my own, my very own... Uh, Swiss Army knife with the channel name on it. I thought that was really, really cool. Um, let's get into what we got here. We've got a couple Hot Wheels. We'll check these out first. We've got a Ford Capri Group 5 uh, race car and Chief Brody's K5 Blazer from the first Jaws movie. Uh, I actually have two of these. I put one up on the wall just because I had to keep one of these in the box. The card artwork is so cool. So this is my, um, the one up on the wall, the box is in a bit better condition. This one's uh, a little scraped up, so I won't feel bad about opening that up. Um, next up, this was one of my birthday gifts to me. I got this for myself. This is an 84 Chevy K10 Scottsdale. This is the Snow Chaser. Uh, hobby exclusive from Greenlight. Really, really, really cool truck. Just absolutely sweet looking. I love the body kit on this. Color combo is really nice. So we'll get a good look at that. And it does have a little bit of information about the Snow Chaser on the back there, which is unusual for green light, but we'll take it. Um, next up, this other one. This is another one that was a, uh, a gift from a friend. This is a 2004 Cadillac Escalade. Now, um, if you've been on the channel for a while, maybe I'll get a picture to show up like right here or something of my truck. I have a 2005 Chevy Tahoe Z71 that is the same color as this Escalade. So, I mean, it's, you know, if you look at it from that angle, it's pretty close to my truck. It's, uh, it's a pretty good replica. Even though it is an Escalade, it's still, it's a really sweet looking Escalade. And uh, same exact color as my truck too, so I think that's pretty cool. Um, next up, we'll check out some of the Auto World stuff. We've got the 67 Chevy Chevelle SS396. This is the only one that I was missing from this. So this was 20, what, 2022, release number four. Um... We gathered all of these, I think minus the GT500. Um, yeah, this was the only one that I was missing, was this black uh, 67 Chevelle. And then down here, oh, there's a Hobby Lobby sticker on my box. Let me get that off of there. I think everybody on this channel already knows that Hobby Lobby's prices are a little insane, but we don't need that reminder. Um, I do have one of the other colors for the 1993 Dodge Stealth RT. I do have the silver one right over yonder, right here. Um, another one that was not like, uh, you know, I wasn't absolutely desperate to grab this, but I'd seen it enough times in stores. I was like, eh, you know what, you know what, I'll take it. And then... Down here on the end, it's a pretty recent release from Johnny Lightning. This is a 1931 Ford Model A Woody Wagon, part of the uh, Collector Storage Tin Series. Very, very, very interesting stuff. Really cool paint job on there. It's got the little surfboards on the roof. But uh, yeah, nice dark candy apple red. Really, really cool. And then these are super, super popular. For some reason, everybody loves these. I mean, I think it's cool, but 
I think one of these is enough. This is the 1985 Plymouth Voyager minivan. Um, like I said, people are going absolutely crazy over these. Um, I don't get the hype. I mean, yeah, the Voyager, I guess it's getting to a point where it's kind of cool. You know, it's old enough that it's a classic minivan. Um, but I think this one is probably going to be enough for me. I don't really need any more of these. Not exactly crazy about it, but I mean, it's cool enough. It's cool enough for me to buy it. Um, all right. So let's start opening some stuff up. And then, like I said, we'll get into these, uh, goodie bags of salvaged and saved cars in a, in a little later. So I'm going to go ahead and pause the video. We will crack open, let's crack open the Hot Wheels stuff first. All right, guys, so here is our 75 Chevy K5 Blazer. Um, this is Chief Brody's Blazer from the first Jaws movie, if you remember. That was a, a bit of a staple growing up in my household as a kid. I've seen that movie probably close to a million times, so I've seen this Blazer plenty. Um, yeah, really, really cool casting. You know, I, you guys know I love my K5 Blazers. Um, so obviously we've got the top taken off of this one. A little Cheyenne badge at the back there. Amity Police Department K5 Blazer. Very nice little replica. That, uh, you don't really see the truck all that much in the movie. Which is why I always thought it was kind of interesting that they did a, uh, a Hot Wheels version of it. But you see it enough to uh, to remember it. It is a very good looking truck. So we have our card here. I did beat it up a little bit getting it out of the box, but that's okay. Like I said, there's another one up on the wall. Up, up here. <laughs> you can't see it. Um, maybe later. Obviously, you've got Jaws on there, the Jaws movie emblem. It's missing uh, the little naked swimmer girl, but I don't think they could put that on a Hot Wheels card. <laughs> um, very, very cool. Doesn't really tell you much about the movie or anything. It is, you know, Hot Wheels is what it is with them. But either way, very cool. Yeah, absolutely love this one. Like I said, I had to have two of these, so... Got a license plate on there. It says 5688, with a little arrow pointing up. I guess I'd have to go watch the movie to see if that's uh, that's accurate. Um, interior leaves a little bit to be desired. Honestly, it's kind of a kind of meh. But again, you know, it's Hot Wheels. The shifter looks like a, a soda in the cup holder. <laughs> But either way, really, really cool looking truck. Absolutely love it. One of the very, very, very few police cars, police vehicles in my collection. I don't really collect uh, police or fire or ambulances or anything of that nature. It's just not something that I'm particularly interested in. I'm more interested in hot rods, race cars, and factory stuff, so... Yeah, not a lot of police cars in my collection, but this is, uh, I guess you can make an exception for that since it is such an iconic movie, iconic vehicle. Um, next up is our Ford Capri Group 5 race car. We got the uh, Ford Motorsport graphics on there. So Group 5 was like a, uh, I guess it was like a sport touring or... Sport Touring, I think they were Sport Touring, uh, racing series from like the, I think like the mid-60s and it went up to the 80s. Um, I don't know all the rules and regulations, but I know there was a lot of V8s, a lot of, uh, a lot of V8-powered race cars. There was Corvettes, Mercury Cougars, stuff like that. And they all had these super wild aerodynamic wide body kits with the giant wings on the back. So this is a really cool looking car. If you've ever seen like a regular Ford Capri, uh, they don't exactly look like this. They don't have this huge cowling and giant fenders. This is all aftermarket wide body kit. Well, not aftermarket, but you know, it's the race car. 
regular Ford Capri would not look as uh, quite as aggressive. Obviously, wouldn't have this giant wing on the back, but a really, really cool looking car. Nonetheless, I'm absolutely thrilled to have this in the collection. This is a really, something about it. It's extremely flat on the bottom, too. Let's take a look at the base here. It says Ford Capri Group 5. What did it say on the base of this guy? Uh, 75 Chevy Blazer Custom. Very, very cool. You can see you got like a little roll cage in the back there. The rear end of this thing is absolutely wild. Very cool stuff. So we'll take a quick look. This is part of the Car Culture Race Day series, number four of five. These are the rest of our stuff back here. We've got a Mercedes-Benz, an Audi, a Porsche, and an Aston Martin. So you see the, the Ford was the only one I really had much interest in. But uh, either way, very cool stuff. So that is our Group 5 Ford Capri. So next up, let's get, uh, let's do, what should we do next? Let's do Chevy trucks. We'll do the Green Light Snow Chaser and the, uh, the Cadillac Escalade. All right, guys. Wow, 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 wow. Cool, cool stuff. So we're going to go ahead and scoot the Escalade back a little bit here for just a second. And we're going to take a look at this uh, Greenlight Chevy K10 Snow Chaser. So I believe this is, what, an 84? Yeah, 1984 Chevy pickup truck. So the Snow Chaser is, uh, if you've ever heard of a Dodge Snow Commander, um, they were Dodge pickup trucks, uh, usually first gen, I think first gen Rams like this one. Whoops. Ooh. The lifted trucks don't usually stay on the lift too well, but you would have a first gen, uh, Dodge Ram and they came from the factory with, you know, off-road tires, a bit of a lift and some other off-road accessories. And they were called snow commanders and it was spelled S N O. So what did Chevy do? They built the Snow Chaser and spelled it S-N-O <laughs> as like just a direct competitor. Or maybe it was the other way around. I forget which one did it first. But either way, um, this is the Chevy variation. It says Snow Chaser on the bed there in the back. It also has this really cool uh, like bed cap spoiler thing going on here with the little bed rails that come off of it. And the, uh, the little lights laid in there that are almost kind of hard to see. The uh, little roof rack lights. Um, obviously a big lift kit on here. Off-road tires. Very, very good looking truck. Absolutely fantastic. I love this red, black, and gold paint scheme. Looks really, really good. There is your... Okay, so it's a Scottsdale trim level there. You can see it says Scottsdale on the fender, K10 Scottsdale. So like I said, real quick, uh, we are going to read up a little bit about this guy. Greenlight was kind enough to give us a little bit of information on the Snow Chaser back here. So it says in 1984, the Snow Chaser uh, is known as one of the rarest pickups ever released by Chevrolet. Although the exact number of these trucks produced is unknown, it is estimated that only around 2,500 were ever built. This limited run pickup was sold primarily in northern states and other wintry areas and came stock with all wheel drive and custom snow tires designed to handle harsh winter weather. So there you go, there's a little diagram of one. Very, very cool. Yeah, like I said, very, very rare truck. Like it says, uh, one of the most, or one of the rarest Chevrolet truck models ever made. Only about 2,500 known to exist. Really, really cool stuff. I, um, I remember seeing this in a, a magazine, a product magazine for somebody, uh, before it had come out, and I was beside myself about how cool it was, and oh my god, I gotta have that. So I was lucky enough to find it uh, when I went out shopping for my birthday. So this was my little birthday gift to myself. Very, very cool truck. Absolutely love how that looks. 
Next up is the 2004 Cadillac Escalade. I don't have a lot of Cadillacs in my collection. I have enough to, I think I have like a little Cadillac shelf. Um, oh, you know what? No, I do. I, I have a, quite a few Cadillacs actually now that I think about it. Either way, um, so we have the 04 Cadillac Escalade. So underneath this is pretty much the same thing as the Tahoe, although the Tahoe, uh, my Z71 fully loaded Tahoe has a 5.3 liter V8. The Escalade got the 6 liter V8, so a little bit bigger engine, a little bit more power. But essentially the, uh, the same vehicle, and this one being the same color as my truck, like I said, I think... Um, I'll try and get another picture to show up right here, and uh, we'll do a quick comparison. But this is pretty much the same exact color as my truck, and then, you know, from from there back, it's pretty much exactly the same. You know, the front ends of the uh, Escalade and the Tahoe are a little bit different, but not by much. If you can picture... Here we go. this front end on that truck, you know. And then of course the uh the interior of the Escalade was probably it was a, a little bit nicer than the Tahoes and the uh Yukons and whatnot. They had uh wood trim panels for the dashboard and a little clock in the center of the gauge cluster and all that fun stuff to make it feel like a Cadillac. Very nice casting. This is part of the Johnny Lightning, uh, the 50 States series. Um, there we go. Not much on the box, but it says uh, 04 Cadillac Escalade. Uh, bonus metal license plate. Here we go. On the back here, this is the working class release number six. Panel delivery, 50 Chevy Suburban, CJ5 Jeep. Evolution of trucks and SUVs continues to unfold with a long and exciting road ahead. Uh, that's not English. <laughs> Collectors in the know recognize... Okay, that's the, the classic Johnny Lightning spiel. And there it is in another language. Interesting stuff. Go ahead and get that tucked away there. And uh, here is the license plate, Massachusetts, O to be me. Um, no license plate on the actual truck, so I guess we can just pretend that that's the license plate from this truck. Oh, whoopsies. Oops, sorry about that. Knocked the camera over. I think it might be time for a new camera stand soon. This one's uh, getting a little loose and floppy. I can't really touch my camera too much without uh, knocking things over, so there's a little hair on there. But yeah, that is our 2004 Chevy Escalade. Um, very cool stuff. Really excited about this one. Doesn't have a sunroof on it. Mine has a sunroof. My Tahoe. But either way, it like at a glance, it, it looks like my truck, and especially there. So if we focus here, in the background, like you, when it's out of focus here, it just it looks exactly like my truck. <laughs> it's weird. But very cool stuff. So next up, I think we will, um, let's break this down into twos. We'll do two of our auto worlds. We'll do the Dodge Stealth and the 67 Chevy Chevelle. So we'll go ahead and pause the video here. Okay, so let's get started with the 67 Chevy Chevelle. We've got the hood open. That should be a 396 under there. It's a Chevelle. Um, I do know that one. Very, very nice looking car. Nice, nice black. There's our Super Sport badge on the back there. Really, really good looking car. So 67 was the, if I'm not mistaken, the last year of this body style. The 68 is when they started to look more, uh, more fast backy. And I'm looking for my 68. I know I have a 68 around here somewhere. <laughs> Uh, here it is. There's the 68 Chevelle, like I said, with the more fast back muscle car look. Sorry I'm so sniffly. I just had a huge sneezing fit while opening these cars up. I'm, my allergies are getting to me. 
which is weird because it's the middle of winter. Um, <laughs> but either way, very good looking car. We do have a license plate on there. It says 396 SS. There you go. So that is a 396 big block. Very, very good looking car. Black car, black interior. The little uh, red line tires look very good. We'll go ahead and shut the hood there. The little trim on the vents on the hood looks very, very nice. I'm perusing right now for the other version of this car. It's a green. Oh, man. It's around somewhere, but this was um, one of the only cars that I was missing from this uh, 2022 release number four. Like I said, minus the uh, the 2021 GT500, I have both versions of all of these other cars now, uh, including now the 67 Chevelle. I had the green one, I was missing the black one, so now we have all the good stuff from that release. Very cool stuff. So while I got the card still in my hand, we'll take a look at it here. Where do we want to put the car? There we go. Uh, our premium facts. Of course, we have an auto world, so we get our facts. It says the Chevelle line of cars from Chevy included the Chevelle 300, 300 Deluxe Ma uh, Malibu, Concourse, SS396, and El Camino. So those were all technically versions of the Chevelle. Uh, governing the horsepower from all cars in the GM lineup other than the Corvette, GM reduced the L34 SS engine option to 350 horsepower from 360 horsepower the previous year. Um, yeah, because the Corvette had to be the fastest, so they governed everything. Um, the Corvette was the flagship car. Nothing could be faster than the Corvette, but there was a lot of stuff that if you... If you took all the Nerf parts off, you could be faster than a Corvette. Um, which I think is funny because it just goes to show that the Corvette was always GM's, you know, favorite child. Very interesting stuff. Really, really good looking car though. Absolutely love it. Super psyched to add that one to the collection. Moving right along, we are going to get into our 1993 Dodge Stealth RT Twin Turbo. So we've got the hood open here. That is a 3 liter V6 twin turbo charge producing around 320, I believe, 320 horsepower. Um, at least into the 300 range, if I'm not mistaken. Um, very, very cool car. This is basically the Mitsubishi 3000 GT wearing a, a suit made out of Dodge. It's a Mitsubishi design, but um, if you remember in the early 90s, Chrysler and Mitsubishi were in bed together and they were producing all kinds of stuff under the name uh, DSM, Diamond Star Motors. So you had things like this in the 3000 GT, the Conquest and the Starion, the Eclipse, the Talon, you know... Uh, uh, all different kinds of stuff. Really, really cool looking car. It's basically my way of getting Japanese cars onto the channel. I just call it a Dodge. <laughs> but um, I think I talked about it a little bit the last time I had a Dodge Stealth on the channel. I had a, or I still am friends with him, but uh, in high school, my friend's mother's boyfriend had a Dodge Stealth, and it was the twin turbo one. And it was, man, when he was driving that thing, when that was out of the garage, you, you know, you kissed the ground that car drove on. These cars are absolutely insane to own. The maintenance on them is absolutely ridiculous. They're impossible to work on because there's no room in the engine bay because of the, uh, when you get the twin turbocharged model, they pretty much take any room in the engine bay and they use that room for the turbochargers, the boost pipes and all the other added accessories that are required to go along with a turbocharger. So in order to fix anything on one of these cars, you pretty much have to take the entire engine apart. There are actually specialty shops across the country that, because most most regular shops will not work on 3000 GTs or Dodge Stealths. They'll just turn you away because they're just overly complicated and it's, it's a nightmare to work on. So there are actually specialty shops that uh, specifically work on these cars along with, you know, other quirky and weird stuff. They're also a nightmare to get parts for. 
Um, really cool car though. The uh, the RT, you know, the the high trim level with all the fancy bells and whistles actually had uh, rear wheel steering, so it was all wheel drive. Um, and the rear wheels would actually turn, just not you know like completely left and right, but they would turn a few degrees uh, to assist you when going around corners at super high speeds, the uh, the rear wheels would actually tow in different directions a few degrees to help you corner better and prevent uh, an oversteer. So a very, very technologically advanced car. Now that I told you everything I knew about it, let's talk about uh, what Auto World knows about it. It says the Dodge Stealth was ori originally chosen to be the official pace car for the 75th Indy 500 it was replaced by the Dodge Viper instead. Probably a good choice. The Viper is just a little bit cooler. <laughs> uh, the Dodge Stealth was introduced in 1991 to replace the Mitsubishi Starion-based Chrysler Conquest. Yeah, that's right. This was uh, this was the Conquest replacement. We actually have Conquest right over here. <coughs> so here is a Dodge Conquest. Um... As you can see, it does say Conquest on the front there. Whoops. Now it's upside down. Um, and then I do have, as well, I don't usually keep this stuff on the channel, but there is the Mitsubishi version, the 1987 Mitsubishi Starion, part of my top secret Japanese car collection. Um... For those of you that have been on the channel for a while, you do know that uh, I keep my collection mostly American-made, American muscle, stuff like that, but recently I have been picking up some Japanese cars that I really just could not resist. Um, if you guys want to see them, let me know. I'll, just, you know. I'll be glad to show them to you, but more of a American muscle on this channel anyway. So that is our Dodge Stealth RT Twin Turbo there. Really a cool looking car. Um, and we're gonna keep moving right along here. So we've got two left. We've got the Ford Model A, 31 Ford Model A, it's up here. And uh, the 85 Plymouth Voyager, weird. So let's get these two cracked open and then we'll get into the, uh, the goodie bags over on the floor. All right, so here is our 1931 Ford Model A Woody Wagon and the 85 Plymouth Voyager. So we're going to start off with the 31 Ford because I actually know less about that, believe it or not, than the Voyager. I know a little too much about those Voyagers. Um, really, really cool looking car. Uh, kind of hot rotted out. It's got, as you can see, little side pipes coming out from underneath the fender there. We did get a little storage tin with this. I'll be uh, sticking this in the box in my closet that is full of the rest of the storage tin, the big Ford logo in there. So it'll probably stop working soon. <laughs> anyway, really, really cool looking car. I love the spoked wheels on there. Pretty thick tires, but you know, it's a toy car. Really, really nice. 1931. So you're just starting to get into like really the, the hot rod scene. Interesting that they uh, opted to keep the fenders on these. Usually you see them with the fenders chopped off and everything. The hood taken off, engines all exposed. Really cool. I like the surfboards on the roof. That is uh, adds a pretty cool feel to the car. Nice uh, bench seat in the front, bucket seats in the back. And then, what is it? It's got a third row? Yeah, it's got third row. Look at that. Full-size SUV there. Very, very cool. No opening hood or anything like that. And we actually, we only have windshield glass. There's no uh, no windows on the side or anything. Very interesting. Oh, uh, you know what? I forgot. I haven't checked license plates. We don't have a license plate on there. We do have a plate on the Stealth. And it says... Sneaky... Can you see that? Sort of, kind of. But the uh, the plate on the Stealth says Sneaky for the sake of getting them all. Really, really cool. I wish I knew more about Fords, but I don't. <laughs> uh, so we do have our collector facts here. I managed to slice a little bit of it off. It says, 
Ford sourced its own maple, birch, and basswood from forests they own in Michigan's Upper Peninsula. Wow, that, that kind of screwed me up there. Um, that's cool. That's interesting. So, I mean, yeah, you know, early 30s, they were actually still making cars out of wood. That was still uh, somewhat acceptable. Um, 1974-42. Some other stuff in the series here. I do have quite a lot of uh, storage tins. We'll have to do a video soon. I actually think I have both of these. The 79 Corvette and the 70 Olds 442. I'm pretty sure I have both of them. <laughs> I'd have to check, but... Uh, I do have quite a large stock of Johnny Lightnings just sitting, waiting to be opened. We'll uh, maybe we'll do a, a full inventory later on in the video once we finish up with the uh, the goodie bags. I'll do uh, I'll show you some of the stuff I've got sitting and waiting, some of the new stuff on the walls, and uh, other stuff like that. So that is our thirty-one Ford Woody wagon. Now. Moving on to the 85 Plymouth Voyager. This was the original minivan. Plymouth made the first, uh, arguably the first minivan. Uh, you can't have a Plymouth Voyager or Dodge Caravan. They're the same thing. Uh, you can't have one of these on the channel, I guess, without talking about that weird, weird, weird time where Chrysler and everybody, really, in the 1980s, everybody, Chrysler, Ford, Dodge, all uh, the domestic companies, everyone was obsessed with turbocharging everything. Things that didn't need to be turbocharged were getting turbocharged, like, you know, quarter-ton pickup trucks and, and uh, minivans. In the late 80s, and I believe actually in the, it started probably like 85 or 86 might have been, um, Chrysler offered the Plymouth Voyager with a turbocharger and a five-speed manual transmission. So you basically had a sport version of mom's minivan. Um, why they sold that, I have no idea. I think Chrysler was just really trying to figure out what people wanted and they had no idea what people wanted, and people didn't know what they wanted either. So they were just kind of trying everything. Like, yeah, sure, stick shift, turbocharged soccer mom hauler. Why not? <laughs> you know? But, um, yeah, anyway, this is an absolutely fascinating casting. It's, it's one of those cars that, like, as a kid growing up in the 90s, you would see Plymouth Voyagers like this, and they were never really, it was never something that you would break your neck at. It was, it was always sitting in somebody's driveway with a little bit of rust on the rocker, and it was just part of the background. It was one of those cars that was just part of the background of, of uh, any generic scene in the late 90s or early 2000s it was never an interesting vehicle but i think we've reached a time now where it's you know i, I can't think of the last time i saw one of these on the road i can't think of the last time i saw one sitting in someone's driveway like they're, they're they've reached such an age where it's like wow the original voyager is actually cool again or, well, I say cool again, I don't think it was ever cool, but I think it just has so much, it carries so much nostalgia and so much um, classic car-ishness with it that it's at that point now that you could show up to a car show in a 1980s minivan and people might actually look at you and give you props <laughs> and go, hey man, that's pretty cool. I mean, it, it is so retro that it is actually, it's almost refreshing to look at. The squareness, the edges, the chrome roof rack, the big ugly wheels. You know, I'm so tired of every car nowadays being that same bulbous crossover shape. It's like every single car on the road is just the same ugly rounded shape that it's, it's refreshing to see something boxy and ugly like this. I don't know. What does this say on our plate here? Bon voyage. <laughs> Very good. Look at that. You've even got your Chrysler, five-point star, Plymouth Voyager, SE, Idaho. Hmm. Very, very interesting. 
Really cool. Like I said, I think one of these is plenty for my collection. I don't know, maybe if I see one of the other colors. If I find one with the wood panel siding, I know they did those uh, pretty recently. If I find one of those, I might grab one though. Uh, so, wouldn't be complete without our premium facts here. It says this is the first release of our new Plymouth Voyager casting. Um, they say that, but it's uh, they just released the Dodge Caravan, and now they're doing the Plymouth Voyager. It's the same casting with a different grill on it. Uh, it says the 1985 Plymouth Voyager was built on the Chrysler S platform, which was derived from the front-wheel drive K platform used on the Aries and Plymouth Reliant. Dodge Aries and the Plymouth Reliant. Um, yeah, it was around that time that they were just building kind of everything off that same front-wheel drive K car platform piece of garbage. Um, but like I said, it's cool now because it's so old. Uh, either way, though, very interesting stuff. So we'll go ahead and get that parked up. And as promised, we are going to take a look at some stuff has been rescued from my parents' house. So I'm actually going to go ahead and pause this recording and uh, make some space here. All right, guys, so I've made actually a bit of an executive decision here. Um, what I'm going to do is break these bags up because there's a lot of stuff here. Um, and I'm going to get started with uh, something that I rescued from my bedroom here. Now, these were collected by myself as a child. I absolutely loved, 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 loved monster trucks. So if you remember from the early 2000s, Hot Wheels had uh, a line of monster trucks. They were pretty generic and I don't think a lot of them were, uh, or I think some of them were, were fictional, some of them were real, but I had Quite the collection of Hot Wheels monster trucks as a kid. I can already see one over in the corner there, can't you? But, um, all right, that's all of them. Go ahead and show you. I recently rescued um, the entire collection. For some reason, as a kid, I had the sense to uh, set them all aside and bag them up. So first off, we've got here Maniac. Looks like a uh, Ford F-150, maybe. These are the uh, these are the first edition ones, so they do have a bit smaller wheels. I'll show you what I mean. Um, these were the the later ones. They had much larger wheels, as you can see, the size difference. And I actually didn't quite like these as much. This is actually one of the only ones that I had with the uh, the larger wheels. Uh, what is this one? This is a Bounty Hunter. It's all faded and kind of worn and beat, but still really cool. Um, this one was another one of my favorites. This was Cyborg with all the goofy wires and hoses and stuff coming off of them. I think uh, another Ford F-150 it looks like, yeah, it was the, uh, the body there. Uh, Spider-Man. This looks like maybe some kind of Ferrari body or something. Not really sure. But it's, uh, you know, I'm not sure if these were real trucks. I know I know Bounty Hunter is a real truck, but I'm not sure if the Spider-Man one was a, uh, a real one. This was my first one. This is the one that got me into them. This was uh, Nitro Machine, which uh, I think this was part of the whole WWE... Uh, WCW crossover thing between Monster Jam and wrestling. So I think this one actually had a different name. I think this was like Inferno or something, but when they did the the WWE crossover thing, this one got called Nitro Machine. Um, another one, the, the Chillin' Villain. <laughs> Looks kind of like an Astro Van, maybe. Kind of just a generic van body or something. Not really sure. It's the same same body as these two here. Um, same as this one actually as well. This is the uh, Scarlet Bandit. I happen to know the, this one and Bounty Hunter are uh, our teammates, and uh, these are actually real trucks. 
but uh, yeah, another another one of that van style body. Uh, we got Wolverine, another Marvel themed one. This one's a Chevy Silverado, Chevy pickup truck. Pretty cool. The Wolverine claws coming out of the hood. They uh, they all have loose axles like this. They they came like that so that when they you know roll over stuff they kind of have like a you know suspension action. So it's not just that they're worn out. Uh, this is another cool one. Uh, super trucker, kind of a tractor trailer, or uh, kind of looks like a Kenworth or a Peterbilt or something. With the uh, tonneau cover, uh, tarp cover on the back. Another really cool one. It's really cool seeing these. I'm so glad I kept them all like kind of separated when I was a kid. And then, of course, you know, you can't have a monster truck collection without grave digger. I actually have two different grave diggers. So this was, you know, normal grave digger, and then this was uh, uh, the earlier grave digger. I believe this was his paint job back in, you know, early 80s, early to mid 1980s. Um, before Monster Jam was really a thing. And then, of course, you know, the classic Grave Digger. This was a must-have for me. I think this was, like, the second one I got. I got the Nitro Machine and then uh, and then Grave Digger. Had to have this. And I've had these, man, since, like, kindergarten, first grade, you know. Over 20 years, these have uh, been in my possession. So I found all those. And then uh, immediately after, went to a die-cast convention and found... Tom Mentz's truck. This is, uh, I believe this is supposed to be called Maximum Destruction, but it doesn't say Maximum Destruction any, anywhere. It just says Team Mentz. And then Tom Mentz up at the window. 2000-2002 uh, World Champion. But, uh, yeah, it's another one from the same, you know, first edition monster truck. So I grabbed it and was like, you know, why not? Just uh, another one to the collection. I just start collecting them again 20 years later. <laughs> But uh, those are all my monster trucks that I rescued from my parents' house. And like I said, I do have some other bags of various, various cars that have been rescued from my parents' house in the past couple weeks. So we'll go over more of that stuff in uh, later videos. Ooh, I did say I'd give you guys a little update. So we'll pull the camera out of the stand here. There's all our monster trucks again. We can check those out. Um, I didn't do the parking garage in today's video. I do apologize for that. I just realized that we skipped over the parking garage and I put all the cars back already. Um, oh well, we'll get it next time. Uh, this is what the wall's looking like. I did consolidate some stuff over there with that parking garage. Um, you've seen most of that stuff. That case is full. Dale flag on the wall. You guys have seen all that stuff. You've seen most of that. The NASCAR Next Gen Collection. I'm running out of room over there. I got a new Kyle Larson car, a new Chase Elliott car, a new Alex Bowman car. So they're just starting to hang on to the edges there. Um, obviously the wall case. Nothing too new up there. There's the uh, the new Jaws truck. That's the one I didn't open. Uh, I got the Rick and Morty spaceship up there from Hot Wheels. So that was pretty neat. So this is underneath the desk. There's probably about, uh, oh gosh, I'd say maybe 30 cars there. Um, up there, that shelf on the top, that's all my Japanese stuff I was telling you about. Here's the other table. This is where we've been filling up. We're already running out of space over here already. Um, I may be able to consolidate some stuff and kind of, you know, make more room. And then if you look under there, without giving too much away, um, those are all Johnny Lightnings. So that's stacked full. Um, there's probably close to 40 or 50 cars in there. So we've got a lot of stuff to open. There's my uh, Bumblebee Camaro. <laughs> so lots and lots of stuff up and coming. And uh, not a lot of room left. 
But um, that is going to do it for today's video, guys. Thank you so much for watching. Make sure you hit the like button, hit the subscribe button. Leave a comment. Let me know what you want to see in the next video or, uh, you know, if there's any cars you specifically want to see. And uh, thank you again, guys, for 500 subscribers. 500 plus now subscribers. I appreciate it to, to no end. You guys are absolutely awesome. So thank you, guys, and I will see you in the next video. Mm-hmm. <laughs>